Hey everybody, it's Mrs. Ryeski. I hope you are doing well. Today we are going to talk about higher order derivatives. Um, but before we begin, um, let's start with a warm up, get our brains moving. Um, so let's take this polynomial here, 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 10x minus 5, and let's try taking the derivative. So how many times can we do that before we get to zero? Well, let's see. The first derivative, when we take the derivative once, will give us 15x, oh my goodness, that was a crazy x, squared minus 6x to the first power plus 10. And of course, the derivative of a constant is zero. So we've taken the derivative once, but I don't have zero. So let's try it again. This time, I'll show that I have taken the derivative twice by using um, a double line, almost like a tally mark. And I'm gonna take the derivative of this polynomial that we just created. So here we go. Two times 15 is 30, and we have x to the first power minus six. And again, the derivative of a constant is zero. But I don't have a zero here. So let's try it again. Now let's take the third derivative. Okay, so 1 times 30 is 30, and the derivative of negative 6 is 0. However, this is still not 0. So we're going to take the derivative one more time, and I suppose you could use four dashes, um, but I'm also going to just write a little 4 here so we know this is the fourth time we've taken the derivative and the derivative of a constant is zero. So how many times can we take the derivative of this function before we get to zero? Four times, it was that fourth derivative that gave us a zero. Notice that your degree of this polynomial is three, and it would take us four turns before we would get down to zero from taking the derivative. So what do you think that that means? Is there a pattern here? Let, make a guess. How many times do you think it's going to take us to take the derivative of this quadratic function, because the highest degree is 2? How many times do you think? Hmm, let's try it. So I'm taking the first derivative. That's going to give me 8x to the first power minus 2. I'll take the second derivative. Derivative of 8x is 8. Derivative of a constant is 0. And I've got the third derivative now, which is zero. So it took us um, three tries to get the derivative to be zero in a quadratic, and it took us four times to get to zero from a cubic. So can we make any guesses around that? Hopefully you can see that one more than the degree of the polynomial will lead you to, taking, um, to getting a derivative equal to zero. So all of those derivatives are what we call higher order derivatives. And um, so it's really not too difficult. You just take the derivative more than once. Most of the time we've been working with um, f prime of x or the first derivative. The second derivative, we just put the two little dash marks just like I was showing you. And we call this f double prime or the second derivative. Um, Leibniz, he uh, used the notation for the second derivative um, d2y divided by dx2. Um, and sometimes this is known as the Lagrange method. So I'll write that down. <clears throat> and you could keep on taking derivatives as many times as you want until you get to zero, right? Um, which is what we were doing in our warm up. Um, so the nth derivative notation, so however many derivatives you take, that would be the nth derivative, um, would be written out like this. So um, we've got kind of the, the format that I was showing you in our warm up was this. And after the third derivative, if we put it in parentheses and then use the number of what derivative that we're on, that's the, a widely held convention that we can use. 
We can use it in um, function notation, which is um, one that we're pretty familiar with as well. Of course, as I said, this is the Leibniz notation or the Lagrange method. And you might be thinking, what is this over here? Um, so this is um, Euler's notation. Um, so the notation that he was using for taking the derivative. So lots of different ways that you can see the derivative being written. Um, and um, you might see them in different textbooks. So don't be afraid if you see something a little bit odd. I think um, we're used to saying, seeing probably these first three options the most. And frankly, um, I think this guy right here, the function notation, is the one that I probably am guilty of using more often than not. Um, so we'll probably see me doing that more. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's calculate some higher order derivatives. Um, so in this problem, um, they're asking us to find f double prime. So basically, it's just saying take the derivative twice. And then you'll be done. Okay, so let's take the first derivative first. So they've given us um, f of x is x cubed minus three um, divided by x. Um, so the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. Now, negative three um, divided by x, this is the same as negative three times x to the negative one power, right? because of our rules of exponents. So if I'm going to take the derivative of that, I'm going to multiply the front by negative 1. So that's going to give me positive 3. And then I'm going to subtract 1 from my exponent position. That's going to give me negative 2. Now I'm not going to put this back into the denominator because I need to take the derivative twice. And it's totally easier to work with your um, your variables with negative exponents than to treat them like fractions, I, in my opinion. So I'm gonna just go forward and take the second derivative. Here we go. Two times three is six, and I'm gonna subtract one from the exponent. So that'll be x to the first power, that's cool. And then I'm gonna multiply my negative two in the front, that's gonna give me negative six, x to the negative three power, because I'm subtracting one from my exponent. Now, this is, f double prime. It's our second derivative. If you prefer to write it in fraction notation, that's cool too. So we got 6x minus 6 divided by x cubed. When you move it down to the denominator, don't forget that you're going to make your exponent positive. Um, either one of these is perfectly acceptable. Um, and I would say if you're working on Math Excel, then um, just make sure you read the directions of how to enter it into the computer or if you're on Khan Academy or something like that um, so that you um, are entering it improperly or the way that they're requesting. You ready for the next one? Here we go. All right, here we go. Example number two. This one says f of x is equal to the tangent of 2x. And... Um, we're supposed to show that f triple prime of pi is equal to 16. Okay, so it's telling us that we have to take the derivative how many times? Three times. And, um, ooh, it's trigonometry, so um, don't forget that you, you might want to get out your formula packet so you, if you don't have that memorized yet. Um, and then they don't want to just know what's the third derivative. They want to show that when you substitute pi into the third derivative, that you're going to get out 16. Whoa. Okay, so let's check it out. Um, <clears throat> I've got to take the first derivative. So f prime of x is equal to, well, I know the derivative of tangent is secant squared. But this is a chain rule problem, so my argument is 2x. So with the chain rule, I'm going to take the derivative of the outside. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. And you keep the inside the same. And then you multiply by the derivative of what's inside. In this case, the derivative of what's inside is 2, because the derivative of 2x is 2. So my first derivative 
is two times, and I'm gonna write this out a little bit nicer. I think, in my opinion, it's nicer. Like this. Um, I think it's easier to work with derivatives when we move our exponents to the outside of parentheses because I think that it helps you to see the chain rule a little bit better. Again, my opinion, um, but that's what I always do. Um, so this is our first derivative. Sweet. I don't need the first derivative. I need the third derivative. So let's get in order to go from the first derivative to the third derivative, we got to find the second derivative. So here we go. f double prime of x. So again, this is a chain rule problem. I'm going to multiply 2 to the front, which gives me 4. And because it's a chain rule, I keep everything inside the same. And I subtract 1 from the exponent. So um, you know, 2 minus 1 is 1. You could put a 1 here. You could just leave it. But now we have to take the derivative of what's inside. And there's two more chains here because I have a secant. And then inside secant, I've got 2x. So I'll start by taking the derivative of secant. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent. Okay. So we're going to multiply by the derivative of secant, which is secant tangent. And you're keeping your angle the same. So secant tangent, keeping the angle the same. Now that we've calculated the derivative of secant, we can calculate the derivative of what's inside that, which the derivative of 2x is 2. Whoa. All right, so this derivative is a little wild, but that's okay. So let's tidy it up. I've got 2 times 4, which is 8. And check it out. I've got a secant 2x times a secant of 2x. That is a secant of 2x squared. And then I also have that tangent that, uh, of 2x that is also being multiplied. Now, I didn't want the second derivative. I want the third derivative. So we've got to calculate the derivative again. Yes, that's right. So this is a crazy problem. So we've got f triple prime. And this time, calculating the derivative is going to be a bit more complicated. And um, the reason why is because I see this as a product. So I'm going to need to use the product rule. <clears throat> okay, so here's my first function and here or my first factor and here's my second factor. So the product rule says 1d2. So I rewrite the first factor. One. And then I take the derivative of the second factor. Now the derivative of tangent of 2x is, well, we actually calculated it up here, right? Was um the secant of 2x squared times 2. Okay, because the derivative of tangent is secant squared, and then you have to multiply it by the derivative of what's inside, which is 2. So that's 1d2 plus 2d1. So 2 would be our second factor, so tangent of 2x times the derivative of the first factor. This one is a triple chain, right? Because I've got my outside function, 8 times something squared, my inside function, secant of 2x, and my inside inside function, 2x. So we got a triple chain. Here we go, power rule time first. 2 times 8 is 16. Then secant of 2x. We subtract 1 from the exponent, so you could put a little 1 there or you can leave it invisible, it's up to you. And then we still have to continue our chain. So the derivative of secant is secant tangent ah. Oh my goodness, I ran out of room. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of what's inside, which is 2. Oh good gravy, I spent way too much space over here on my f triple prime. All right, let's tidy this up. 8 times 2 is 16. And then I've got secant of 2x squared times secant of 2x squared. 
Well, that is the secant of 2x to the fourth. Mm -hmm. Plus, okay, over here. Um, I have 16 times 2, which is 32. Remember that 2 came from taking the derivative of what was inside. Then it looks like we've got hmm, a secant 2x times a secant 2x. That is a secant of 2x squared. And then I've got a tangent of 2x times a tangent of 2x, which is a tangent of 2x squared. Wowzers. Okay, so um, now we've got our triple derivative. That's great, but we need to show that f triple prime of pi is equal to 16. So we need to substitute in a pi for all these x's. Okay, so f triple prime of so that's going to be 16 times the secant of 2 pi to the fourth power plus 32 times the secant of um, 2 pi squared times the tangent of 2 pi squared. Now, maybe you're not like memorizing everything on your unit circle, but when I think about 2 pi, because now, because everything was multiplied by 2, the x's were multiplied by 2, I know that 2 pi is right here, okay? And this has an x value of 1 and a y value of 0. I know that secant of 2 pi is 1 divided by the cosine of 2 pi. Now, at 2 pi, cosine is my x value. That's equal to 1. So I've got 1 over 1, or just, whoa, 1. I don't know why it does that sometimes. So the secant of 2 pi is 1. Sweet. So everywhere I see a secant of 2 pi, I can replace that with 1. So I got 16 times 1 to the fourth power plus 32 times 1 to the second power times, ooh, the tangent of 2 pi. Well, I know that tangent is my sine divided by my cosine. Sine is my y value. Cosine is my x value. Zero divided by one is zero. So the tangent of two pi is zero. So where I see a tangent of two pi, I'm gonna place a zero in. And then of course that's being squared. Although it doesn't really matter because like squaring zero, like who says that? Okay, I guess I just did, but you know what I mean. All right, so 0 squared is 0. 0 times 1 squared is 0. Times 32 is also, yes, you guessed it, 0. 1 to the fourth power is 1. 1 times 16 is 16. So I've got 16 plus 0, which is 16. And that, my friends, is what we are trying to show. So... That's it. That's higher order derivatives. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. It's pretty straightforward. If you can take one derivative, you can take a higher order derivative. No big deal. Um, when you go on and do your homework, please make sure you do my lab and mastering day eight, the higher order derivatives. Or if you're working out of the textbook, these are your problem sets for that one. Um, best of luck to you guys. I miss you. And um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe.